what I want to say to people is you know your body. Mm. Other people are not living in your body. You know your body and you need to believe yourself. I'm Lori Gottlieb. I'm a therapist and author and this is The Air Between Us All. So let's face it, it's difficult and awkward to open up about personal health issues, which is why Amgen is on a mission to give people living with asthma and their loved ones an opportunity to create stronger connections with each other, to have more empathetic conversations, and to develop a deeper consideration for the challenges of managing asthma. I'm Hannah, I have severe asthma. Hi, my name is Zil, this is my husband Trig, and I have asthma. Hi, I'm Kit, and I have asthma. Having an asthma attack feels... I feel constricted. I can't breathe, I panic. I feel like my ribs are trying to press it down, but my lungs can't expand outwards. You literally feel like you can't breathe, you wheeze. I feel exhausted. What was it like for you when you were growing up and you didn't really know what was going on? Did people understand what was happening for you? Well, I think my mom thought that I was uh, making things up <laughs> for a long time because she's like, the doctor says there's nothing wrong with you. I was born with asthma, though the doctor didn't realize I had asthma until about a year old. My mom was trying to convince them because it runs in my family. I know my immediate family understood. I feel like I don't, I never really tell anyone I have asthma. I just kind of deal with it on my own. Sometimes it's really difficult to explain my severe asthma to my friends and family, and I just don't know how to, how to get across them that it is in fact severe asthma. As an adult, it's harder for me to share than as a kid, which is really interesting. What is it that makes you hesitate? People start looking at you differently. They have their perception of you shifts a little bit. Because I work as a dancer and mm -hmm. last year I was on a tour and a lot of the cast members liked to go out after the show and I specifically don't want to like be in a place with this smoke because I don't want to put my lungs into that mm -hmm. area. So I'll just stay on the bus. What I think you don't realize is people probably miss you. And so if you were to tell them the truth, I think people would be so willing to include you in the activities in a way that works for you. So what are some of the tips you have for more effectively communicating my needs? I think the thing to remember is that everybody's dealing with something. So I think being open with them also brings you closer because then you're being open, you're being vulnerable, and you're usually not asking for much. And I can't imagine anyone being like, no. No, that's the thing. <laughs> well, that, that's, that's such a great point because people don't say no. Yeah. I mean, usually people say, oh, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. Yes, tell me how I can help. What are some of the best ways to discuss health challenges with a romantic partner, my, my husband? That's such a great question because it's not just one conversation. Mm -hmm. It's a series of conversations and it, it's part of your life and it will come up up organically and I think the way to talk about it is not to kind of dump all the information at once just laying it out very simply this is what asthma is mm -hmm. I live with asthma here are some triggers for me and that's just a great place to start yes yeah, so when we met I did let him know like I have asthma he was used to seeing me stay prepared you know making sure I had everything in my purse just in case I had an attack I love that you brought it up early on okay. so that the conversation was broached it's open and now yeah. there's a place to go with it because Zeal was vulnerable with you early on and she opened up to you about living with asthma did that make you feel more comfortable being vulnerable with her at the beginning of the relationship it was actually a relief that she was that transparent because then I can kind of, I can be yourself you know, be myself be more vulnerable and share my life experiences and what I've been through as well. So it builds trust. I think it's so important for people living with a chronic condition not to make their lives small. Mm -hmm. And I think once they open up about it and they talk to the people around them about it, they can feel safe. I feel like my biggest takeaways from the conversation that we had is to be strong, which means to be vulnerable. People will be encouraging, people will be accommodating, and I, I need to go out and tell people. What I hope people will do is if they start talking about this, that they can work with the people around them to find a way to do the activities that they like to do. So you're not making your life smaller, but you can still have this big, beautiful life. Thank you all for joining us. And remember, vulnerability, empathy, and open communication are the greatest tools to bring us closer together and to clear the air between us all.